We have a BU player down in the corner. It's Travis Roy, the freshman from Yarmouth, Maine. It was a fluke accident. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Travis Roy, on the hit, hit his head against the boards. Uh, I've delivered thousands of checks, and just the angles were perfectly wrong. He's knocked out. He is out cold. It, it, it's a dramatic moment. There's, there's no doubt about it. Obviously, a lot of concern all around the arena for Travis Roy, a guy that uh, is pretty highly thought of by this coaching staff. He was going to get some time on special teams and so on. To see somebody uh, young and strong and healthy and uh, at the top of his career um, and, and a second later to, 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 to know that his life as he knew it was over. You can see the uh, concern on Jack Parker's face. When he got injured, I thought, you know, he'd be back. maybe he'd be out for the year. You know, maybe he'd be out for four months. I never thought he'd be paralyzed when he left the rink. He was out by the time he fell to the ice. Travis has not moved. This is a very, very quiet Brown Arena right now. He's a young man at age 20 that had his life completely turned upside down. As a parent, certainly, uh, Mike, there probably can be no more devastating a moment than this. It was so devastating, and it was so hard to watch it all happen. On the ice, the, the first words that I said to my dad was, Dad, I made it. And he knew when I said that I'd made it uh, exactly that, that I checked off that goal. Yes, he reached his primary goal of playing Division I hockey, and that's when his life ended. It was only 11 seconds into his first shift at Boston University. 11 seconds that changed everything. Travis Roy was rushed to the hospital where the diagnosis was grim. Travis had cracked his fourth and fifth cervical vertebrae, paralyzing him from the neck down. 11 seconds to go from an elite Division I hockey prospect to quadriplegic. I used to go over after practice every night and go see Travis. He was at the BU Medical Center. About the fourth or fifth night I went over, it was the first time I was alone with Travis. He said to me, can you do me a favor, coach? I said, yeah, what's that, Travis? He said, would you scratch my nose? And it just dawned on me how bad this is going to be for him, you know, that he can't even scratch his own nose right now, you know. Uh, and I, you know, I, I, to this day, I'll never, I'll never forget the way he asked and how helpless he felt. It's a hard life. How the heck did we end up here? I wanted to be the, the great hockey player that, that visited the person in the hospital. Uh, I, I just never in my life pictured myself as being the one in the wheelchair. And uh, so that's always been bitter, bittersweet. The hardest thing for me was my whole life, I just wanted to see how good I could be. I just wanted to see how good of a hockey, hockey player I could be. Was the college level, is that where it would come to an end? Or could I have played in the NHL? Could I have been on the Olympic team? I mean, I. I can't but help but think, maybe it could have. But at the same time, the, it was with this action, there was, there was the birth of uh, other opportunities. Great opportunities to, to meet great people from presidents to great athletes, uh, traveling to see new places. I always enjoyed art. I always enjoyed ceramics. I loved working on a uh, potter's wheel, but uh, that, that wasn't in the cards, but I was still able to paint just using my mouth. And I do quite a bit of painting. I carried the Olympic torch. So there's no doubt about it that, that there have been opportunities that have come my way that never would have, I uh, would never would have had um, had it not been for my accident. 11 seconds doesn't make a career, and uh, he never had a chance to show what he could do. And I think that's what made it so difficult for him to come to the rink for a long time, was he just, he missed the game so badly. Just playing the game, the smell, the noise, the, I'll never forget him talking about what he misses the most is the sound of the ice cutting the, uh, the, the skate cutting the ice. But there's no question in my mind he would have been captain of this team. Uh, I always tell people, if you look at the real great years that BU Hockey's had, uh, I will guarantee you that in every one of those years, the best player on that team was the best guy on that team. And there was no question in my mind that not only would Travis Roy have been the, one of the best players on the team, he would have been the best guy on the team. That's the type of kid he was. The bond that coach Jack Parker and Travis Roy shared on the ice continued to magnify off the ice. From the moment Travis was taken to the hospital, coach Parker was at his side whenever possible. A deep emotional attachment developed between the two men, and that bond continues to this day. The relationship 
between Jack Pocket and Travis has been as close to being a second father as I think that anybody could be. I always tell people I have two daughters and 208 you know, sons, uh, but Travis is really the closest. He's really part of our family. I, I think he will continue to support Travis uh, in any way that he can uh, and keep him involved in everything that's going on in Jack's life. We go out to dinner and everybody knows Travis in this town. It's, you know, walk right, right down the street and I'm standing next to him walking down. Hi, Travis. You know, he, he's, he's a celebrity in this town. The city of Boston has really been something for Travis. Travis may have been absent on the ice, but not in his teammates' hearts. And they made sure he wasn't forgotten to immortalize Travis's short but impactful legacy left on Boston University. Coach Parker made a decision to do something that had never been done before. I said, guys, I want to announce that we've decided that for the first time, and probably for the last time as long as I'm the coach here, we're going to retire a number. I decided that this was really something special. It would be something that would be special for our program, and it would be special for Travis to have it. I, I really want to get you OK with it. You know, I, I think it's important that you guys uh, are OK that we do this. And they all stood up and gave him a standing ovation. Uh, There's no greater honor uh, as an athlete to, to have your number retired, and um, it's, a, it's a pretty steep history of uh, great, great players, and, and, I, and I've got to say great, great people, even more so great people. The night we put the banner up for Travis, and Travis and his family were there, obviously, uh, and we talked about it afterwards, that he was so excited about that, he was so proud of that, that, that he, you know, people will always remember him, that, that he was a BU hockey player. As far as Myself as a dad, how proud I am. Uh, I don't think people could even begin to understand the depth that there is, the pride that I have in, in my son. The continuing pride and love that supported Travis from the onset of his injury would be essential to his outlook in coping with this new challenge in his life. The harsh reality of possibly being confined to a wheelchair was finally setting in. Unlike hockey, there are no off days from being paralyzed. Living with paralysis, it's, it's as hard as most anything out there. Um, trying to fit back into society, just trying to reestablish the relationship with your family and friends um, is, is one thing, but then just trying to figure out how you, how you fit into the society, wheeling, wheeling through uh, life. And the, the wheelchair was definitely uh, a, a bit of an anchor, a bit of a... a, a a major burden and uh, it was hard. The thing that went through my mind in, in rehab and uh, was trying to put my life back together was, I, and it sounds so simple, but I, I wanted to be a productive part of society. And there were two parts to that. One, one was I wanted to give back. We started the Travis Roy Foundation. Half the money goes towards research and the other half of the money we raise goes towards individual grants, towards wheelchairs, voice activated computers, simple home modifications, just, just really simple things that just make life living with paralysis a little bit easier. I do hope to walk someday and it's a matter of time, it's a matter of money and, uh, and we're getting there. Along with the Travis Roy Foundation, which has awarded more than $3.5 million for spinal cord research and individual grants to injured survivors, Travis is also a published author. In 1997, Roy wrote 11 Seconds, a memoir which chronicled his accident, rehabilitation, and perseverance through this personal tragedy. The book really tells a pretty good story of, of how it happened, what happened afterward. Uh, the thing that amazes me is how grandmothers and uh, young children and husbands and wives and uh, people that love hockey, people that don't know a thing about hockey, um, all, all really get something out of it and enjoy the book. So it's been really quite universal. And 15 years later, you forget a lot of things. And uh, it's nice to have a little bit of an archive there of uh, my story and, and uh, especially the, the people that played a big, big role in my life. The memoir not only touched countless spinal cord injury survivors and their families, but it also inspired Travis to have the confidence to continue to share his journey, this time through motivational speaking engagements. I do a lot of motivational speaking to corporate groups and schools and colleges, and, and it's, it, uh, it gives you real value, it gives you a real sense of worth to, to, to make a living and to, to succeed at that.
mouth. I, you see, when I went into the boards that night, I fractured my fourth and fifth cervical vertebrae from the top of my spinal column. As a result, I'm a quadriplegic. My reality is that medical science hasn't figured out a way to connect the messages from my brain to my muscles. And that's the challenge that chose me. I've always told him, you know, for a number of years, you know, I'm not friends with him or, or you know, I don't look up to him because he's in a wheelchair. You know, I, I'm friends with him and look up to him because he's a, a terrific guy and he's just been so inspirational to me and to my family. For us as a family, Travis has made it so easy to accept him in this role that, it, that he's, you know, was put into. What made Travis the able-bodied person is what's making Travis that disabled person now. His soul is the same, the heart is the same, the caring, the sharing, the loving has never gone away. He truly does inspire us. I always tell people that the worst thing that ever happened to me as a coach at BU was the Travis Roy uh, injury. And the best thing that ever happened to me as a coach at BU was the way Boston University and the, and the hockey community reacted to Travis Roy. The athletic background, the hockey background, there's no doubt that it, it's probably been uh, one of the biggest reasons for my success after my accident. And hockey teaches you, you to compete. It teaches you not to give up. It teaches you uh, to work hard. I have found in life there are times where we choose our challenges, um, and, and there's other times when the challenges simply choose us, and, and really it comes down to what, what we do in the face of the challenges. Um, that really determines who we are, and, and more importantly, who we can and, and what we can't. He's such a good example, such a good role model, you know, for me, and I know he is for a lot of people. Uh, you know, just the way he's, he's handled this, uh, you know, every step of the way is, you know, just pretty inspirational. It's amazing the attitude he has, absolutely amazing. A victim is somebody that people should uh, uh, maybe you feel bad for. And a survivor is somebody that's, that's made the best of the situation.